Right, so we continue the series of ripping, tearing and shredding. I know you're enjoying this, because I certainly am. It's a great system, this cloth system and ripping, oh, I just love it. So here we have a flag. Well, not just any old flag. This is this is uh, Jack Sparrow's flag, isn't it? You know, because he's it's the one where he put his uh, his own mark on it in the film, I think, with the flag, with the uh, little sparrow there. <laughs> yeah, I just love this. So, as you can see, really, really nice effects with the rip in here. Okay, hanging off this rope. We've cached it now, and it's just looking really, really nice. All right, so what we're going to do, right? So I'm going to include this actual file, as you can see here, that it's already packaged up, ready to go, um, with flag, flagpole, rope, scene effects, where we've got the turbulence, wind, and the camera rig, all of that. That's all going to be included in my Gumroad site. So the link is below. Uh, it's going to have stills. It's going to have some textures for different flags. Um, and a longer tutorial showing the detail of this, right? So in today's video, we're not going to go into modeling and attaching it to the rope. That's going to be in my longer one that you can download on my site. Um, this one, we're just going to look at the ripping again. We're going to look at the focus on the tearing and the ripping and how we attach a flag to a, to a pole, but just not with the rope. Um, and then just put some simple textures on. So let's get on and do that. Let's start with a new scene. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're just going to build a flag and a pole and we're going to do it fairly quickly because I just want to get to the um, how we attach it and how we get the tear in in this video. Uh, so let's just go for a cylinder. Let's shrink down the, the radius. It's a little bit more on the height. And let's also... Um, Let's make another another cylinder and make it much, much smaller. And just increase the radius to about three. Let's bring that up to the top nearly. Let's make another one and then let's bring that down there. They're just going to be the little points that hold the flag. Okay, we can actually have those like 2.5. They don't want to be very big. They just want to be like little reference points. Uh, now we need a a plane let's put that in the z so we get that to go the right way and let's just shrink it down to a, like a flag size so it just fits on these on these little bits we've added here look okay so don't have to be too precise here it's especially for like a pirate flag <laughs> it can be quite rough and ready um, okay, so let's go go out shading with lines because we need to add more lines here. This is nowhere near enough to to get a really nice ripping effect and all the material threads and things coming out. So we need to add quite a lot. We go about let's go 200 and then in the height. Let's go. Let's just do it visually because we want these to just look like little squares. So we can probably go 200 by 100. Okay, right now there's a little technique that I've that I came up with that adds a kind of seam or a hem to the flag um, so it doesn't tear, and we want we want to add that top and bottom just so it gives a nice effect of the, you know like like this like the one I've got here if I just go forward you'll see that there's just find an appropriate place you see here that where we've got this this line which is kind of continuing along and it's not really breaking and we get to the end and we've still got it just here look that is what I'm talking about here is if we didn't do that this would all just break up right so we need to add this hem or seam or whatever you want to call it to the top so the way we do that is we make the plane editable we go to polygon mode and we just want to go UL for edge selection and we want to select the top two. I'm actually facing the wrong way there, aren't we? That's the that's the uh, reverse. Yeah, let's work on this side. Um, let's let's do the top two, and then go right click and then dissolve. So it takes out all the subdivisions. Let's do the same thing on the bottom. Just select 
those two rows, right click and dissolve. Okay, and this is gonna make that band of like hem thickness, you know, like it's been over sewn and, and, and stitched over. Right, so now we've got that, we need to add some some dynamics to this. So let's call these things, these, let's, let's rename these because we've got, we'll get confused. So that's the pole and these two will be like, a, I don't know, a bracket or something. Let's just put a bracket in there. Right, so these two are brackets, that's the pole and then this is the flag. Right, and so on, on the brackets here, we need to add a cloth tag on both of these. Um, but we're going to pin it down. We're going to put with pins 100%. So it's going to have a cloth, a cloth reference, which it needs, but it's not going to act as cloth. It's not going to move. Um, on the flag, let's right click and add cloth. Um, now let's go back to these brackets because what we want to do, we want to highlight those and we want to right click and we want to add a connector. All right, and if we go down here and say update live, and then if we increase the search radius and the max connections, let's just go across to here and have a look and see what's happening. Let's just make that bigger. Now, nah, as you can see that the more, so we, we've increased that to sort of three to four centimeters and it's shooting out all of these yellow threads. And that's effectively what they are. They're threads that are connecting um, two cloth objects together. That's why, they, that's why they both have to have cloth tags on them to work. But by adding that pinned part down here, it will not move around as cloth. All right, so I think that is a good start. We've pinned them in, we've got connect, connections on, on both brackets. We've got a seam or a hem at the top. Um, let's make sure we don't have gravity in the scene. So you go control D, you go to simulation and scene and zero out the gravity. We don't want gravity to pull this down. We want to put our own um, forces in here. So we'll put turbulence and we'll put wind. Uh, the turbulence, let's use it about, I don't know, let's try 15, 30 sort of numbers there, 30 and 30% in the scale, about 50 odd in the strength. Wind, we need to go a bit higher here. Let's go, know, let's try 300 and 100 on turbulence. And then we also need to aim this wind. Now you can have this, um, if you go right click and go vibrate tag, we can actually say rotation here and we can put in, we can put in a few numbers and this wind will move around okay as you can see it's moving around now for now let's just turn that off but you can do that you can move the wind direction so you can have it going one way and then altering and blowing back the other way uh, so let's just run that again because i think we've actually got something looking pretty good probably a little bit too strong there's quite a lot of turbulence and movement there so let's just dial these back a little and the wind Let's go 200, let's see what we get there. Okay. And let's have more frames, we've only got 90, let's go 500 to make sure we can see things working. Right, so there we go. So we've now got a flag, that's flying on a pole. It's been connected together with these, these lovely connector threads and the more connection connections you make, the stronger this, this area will be here so if we if we increase all this search radius up look put absolutely loads and then let's play it again you see it's grabbed it completely it's like it's it's stitched it over and over and over again it says you're not going to move you're not going to stretch you're going to stay put and it, it really does look lovely and work well doesn't it you really see these working and bending you know like they're actual like little bits of elastic. It's a lovely little system that I love that. Right, so there we go, there's the flag, joined to the pole. Now the fun bit, let's rip it up. <laughs> let's get the wind and turbulence to rip it. So what do we do? We go to the flag, we right click, and we add a vertex map. 
Okay, let's just come out of that mode, there we go. So all we need to do now is just decide where the ripping is going to take place. So we, we paint on weaknesses in the flag. Now, if you look at most like ripped pirate flags, for example, they're all shredded at the front, aren't they? You know, they've got the odd hole in them and, and maybe this hem is kind of hanging off a bit, but they're all shredded at the front. So with the flag, the way it is here, we can, we can change the size of this, but we've effectively got now a paintbrush and we're gonna paint on yellow and that's gonna be the area that's affected. So if we just do something like this, kind of, let's make it a bit smaller, kind of make some, imagine the, the red bit is what's left behind and the yellow bit is the bit that's gonna kind of come out. So if you just make, now th this is totally random, do not worry. And, and if you want to get rid of some of these, you can do control on the keyboard and you can kind of use it like an eraser and rub some bits out. So just play around. That's the kind of thing that I would say, is just, just kind of rip the front and let's put the odd hole in as well. Because wherever you do that, it will start to rip in those areas as well. Okay, so let's just see what we get. Um, now, before it works, what we need to do is go to the cloth tag and we need to go to surface and we need to go to tearing just here look, and activate cloth tearing. And we then need to put this um, map we've just made, the vertex map, in there. And this tear past, I mean, if you, you can right click and it will show help, it'll actually tell you here look, exactly what the uh, what tear past and all that does. So it's basically, it's 100% it will tear straight away. 150, it will take longer to tear. So we want to bring this down to say 105, which means very it will very soon tear, but it won't tear like straight away. So that's kind of how I look at the gauging. This, this tear guiding thing here, it's a bit like which way it will tear. So if you go 90, it tends to tear sort of differently. So let's just see what happens. Let's, let's highlight the, the map so you can see what's happening now. Now let's rewind to zero and press play. And straight away that we've got this lovely tearing on the ends as the wind and the turbulence are going to really damage the flag. So you just got to wait and see what it does which is a really fun part. So all these little fibers are all gonna be drifting off and it's gonna be damaging it and making it all ragged on the edges. Now, let's just stop it there because I've just thought this seam that we created, we could add some more yellow to here. Just a little bit like that. And what that will do, let's just see if it will do what I think. What it should, yeah, it should rip underneath it, leaving this hem intact. You know, so at some point, if it's done, if it rips on the front, this um, one without the subdivisions in the hem will actually flap around, which is what you'd expect, isn't it? You know, it's, it, it's very much like this one, where you've got these pieces left which don't break completely. So you've got you've got a hem built in. So. Let's give that another go. So that really is going to be it for this video. I don't want this to go on and on. I'm not going to do texturing or I'm not going to add the rope at this point. So if you want the one that I've shown you at the beginning with the rope and how it connects to that and how we put the eyelets in and how we, we light everything and we put the textures on the map properly. If you want that, that file and all of that stuff, all the textures and some extra videos and the tutorial showing you how that works is all below in my Gumroad website. There's a link below to it. It's only a few dollars. So if you want to have a shortcut and just take all this stuff and see how it all works in a lot more detail, then feel free to go and grab those. So what do you think? It's a nice effect, isn't it? It looks really, really nice. It's really simple to, to grab these um, connections now, get it stuck to a pole, and then break it all up. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Have fun, go and have a play with this now. It's great, it's a great fun. You can put any logos on here, you can have your own company on here, you can do what you like. 
it's great fun so i will be scratching my head now trying to think of another ripping tearing shredding idea that i can bring to you um, if you've got any suggestions for things that rip tear or shred please leave them in the comments below and i'll see if i can accommodate a video for you my name is mike jones from visual animation take care goodbye for now